talk about choice. Choice is really important. It's what gives us freedom and power in our lives. Last time I talked about why it was important for us to give you these choices for these projects because we feel that it impassions you, that it empowers you. Hopefully you will be more engaged with your learning. I want to talk more about that choice. All of the expectations are out in front of you. You know what's coming ahead. We've done Criterion C and D before. So those of you that want, you could sit down for a period of time and you could do your project. You could document all of your work in Criterion C and C4. You can reflect on the things that you changed from your plan and then you can move right on to Criterion D and start evaluating your product, creating testing methods, uh, describing the impact on your target market. And you can just get it done and out of the way and you're done with design. This is a choice that you have. Of course, you can choose also to follow step by step um, and going with us at the same pace, and that's fine. You can also choose not to do any of that. Not doing anything is also a choice. So at this point, everybody has a portfolio. Either you told me you wanted to use Word or Sway or something else, and you're using that, or if you didn't make that choice, I made the choice for you, and I gave you a template in Microsoft Word. So it's these new portfolios where we will be doing all of our work criteria C and D. Some of you have still not chosen your project. You need to do that. You need to do it right now. If you have questions, ask me or ask your friends, but you need to choose your project. Then you need to make a plan in C1 in your new portfolio. Some of you have completed that, and they're great. I want to show you a really good example of a C1 plan. This is from an MYP3 student. He's given us the steps, one through six. He's given us detailed instructions for each of those steps. He's estimated the amount of time that it's going to take. And over here, uh, I like that he was using design command terms. It shows that he's really reflecting on his process. And if you look in here, he's done something, he's kind of encapsulating a lot of the design cycle work all in this one step. He says he's going to take a look at other logos, which is like A3, analyzing existing products. Down here, he says he's going to do a lot of sketches and then pick his favorite one. That sounds like B2 and B3. And I really like that at the top of this, he's given an introduction so that the reader knows what this table is all about. Those of you that have completed it, you are ready to launch on your project. All the instructions that I felt that you needed to finish these projects are in the PowerPoint that we shared. instructions. If they have video instructions, you can pause it and rewind it and watch it as many times as you need. If you get stuck, you have questions, or you're confused, please go to the chat group in Teams that I have put you in with other people doing the same challenge. I want you to go there first. And I'm not asking you to do this because I'm lazy and because I don't want to talk to you. I'm trying to get you to exercise your skills in communication, in collaboration, in problem solving. And if with your peers in that chat group you still cannot solve the problem, then you can reach out to me and I'm happy to help. Guys and girls, I'm really excited to see these projects. I'm really excited to help you along the way to create these things that you will then be able to share with your friends and family and with the world. Please be good communicators in asking for what you need and make it a great day.